everyone. Um, today we are going to be painting mushrooms. I am excited for this new series that I'm starting today. Um, we're gonna do all things woodland, forest, woods um, over these next few weeks. I haven't decided how long, but um, I am excited to take you guys along and show you some new things to paint, and I hope that you guys um, enjoy this new series. All right, to get started, um, I have my two cups of water, and I have, I'm have i using the size 8 Princeton Velvet Touch today and Arches Watercolor, and this is my palette made up of um, Windsor & Newton Professional Watercolor Paints. I've got uh, probably around 20-ish colors here, and this has been my go-to for right now. So. This is what we're gonna be using today. Um, to paint these mushrooms, we're gonna have some woodland themed um, videos coming the next several weeks, and so I'm excited to take you guys along. Um, the first one we're gonna paint is the iconic red top mushroom, and I have a little bit of um, red, Windsor Newton red, and adding just a little bit of burnt umber to it. Putting lots of water on my brush and I typically work with my paper slant a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And um, I'm gonna create an up at a half, a half circle. Take some of the pigment out and add just some more watercolor here. So pretty simple, half circle, and I made so that my edges aren't quite straight. That'll add character. And once this is dry, we'll add some white spots with my um, watercolor. Actually, I'm gonna use gouache today, I think. So we're gonna let that dry um, before we add the stem, and we're gonna move on to the next one before um, until this is dry. So the next one we're gonna do is called the bullet, or bullet, I'm not sure. I am not a mushroom expert, but I'm mixing some lamp black with some burnt umber, getting a darker um, brown color, and I'm adding just a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, burnt sienna is a red tone, and it just adds such richness to the color. All right. Again, half circle. Um, I'm gonna make this one not quite as deep, maybe. And then we're gonna swoop around like this at the bottom instead of having the choppy bottom. Add more water to it. Now, something you can do to um, create the sun, the, if the light's coming from this direction, you'll wanna have a white spot up here. So typically what I do is rinse my brush and then dry it off on my paper towel and just go in and pick up that pigment. See how easy that was? Just pick it up a little bit and you can do as much or as little as you want. And the more dry your paint is, the easier it will be to keep that white spot. But I just keep going in and picking it up. And then for the stem, we're gonna use that same color, except we're gonna water it down quite a bit more so that it's not quite as dark. And I'm gonna leave a space between the top and the stem so that it doesn't bleed into each other. And you're just gonna create the stem just like this. And then I'm gonna go back in with the dark color again and just add a little bit at the top to let it bleed. And actually, we're gonna do the same up here. I would forgotten to do that, but we're gonna do the same there. And we're gonna go 
back in and pick up some more pigment. All right, um, back to the red one. I think we're gonna attempt to do that. It still looks a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start on it and we'll see what happens. And it's, it'll be fine if it bleeds, it'll make it look nice. So with this one, um, we're gonna kind of create an umbrella over the main stem. Oh yeah, see it's bleeding, but you know what? I I think it'll look great with that bleed. So you're gonna do that, and for this brown, I use the same brown in he as in here, um, the burnt umber, burnt sienna mixture, and we're gonna use the same color and just go in and create just a smaller stem there. And I, I have very little patience when it comes to painting with watercolors. I do not like for it to wait in between layers. So you will see me, yeah, not being patient. So, all right, so we've got these two pretty much done. We'll come back in with some shading and um, adding some more darker spots after it's completely dry, but um, we'll move on to some other little ones. And most of these, I do not have a name for it. I just found them online and I thought they looked fun and easy to do. And um, the next series of watercolors, I'm thinking of doing like maybe some woodland animals. So you guys can let me know if that's something you'd like to see. So for this, I took some um, yellow ochre and some burnt umber and mixed that together. Most mushrooms are just half um, half circles, pretty simple. And here I'm adding just a little bit of dark, um, I believe it's burnt umber and lamp black mixed together, left over on my palette. So mix that together and did that. I love these little tall ones. I think they're so adorable. Again, I'm gonna add a light. We're gonna make the light come from this direction and so the light is shining on this, which will make this lighter. just a little bit more burnt umber and maybe a touch of lamp black and a rich dark brown again half moon add some black also, something to keep in mind, mushrooms are not perfect in nature. Therefore, yours don't have to be perfect. I think there's a lot of freedom in knowing that nature is not perfect and therefore we don't need to be perfect on our illustrations and our paintings. All right, this one I'm gonna let dry before I put on the stem. So we're gonna go back up here, maybe. So a way to know if your painting is completely dry, if you take the back of your fingers or hand and you touch it and it feels cold, then it is not completely dry. Even though it's not shiny, um, it is not completely dry. Now, the stem is, but not the top. So we're gonna work a little bit on the stem here. Um, taking some of this brown mixture, I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading underneath here and here at the side. So 
see what this one. And this one, um, I'm actually gonna add this ridge. It's very hard to tell, but the under cap of it is just a little bit lighter. All right. Um, this red one, I'm not like super happy with it, so we're gonna go back over it. Now, since this one has white spots, you what you could have done is either used a masking fluid or um, left white circles um, unpainted, but I just, I went ahead and just did it without that, without thinking, and so we'll add the white in later. I keep splattering water because that's how I paint. All right, next we are going to paint a little, let's see, this is Cadmium yellow mixed with some yellow ochre and a little bit of raw sienna. And if you don't have all these colors, don't worry. Use what you have. Um, yeah, make do with what you got. And I'm gonna add some brown in here. I feel like it's too yellow, so we're gonna add in some brown. All right, we're gonna let that top dry as well. And then, um, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. I think we'll do one more. Let's see. I'm gonna make some more brown here. Burnt umber. Some burnt sienna. And some lamp black. Oof, too much lamp black. So what I'm gonna do is just add in some more burnt umber and burnt sienna and then I'm gonna water it down. All All right, and I'm gonna take some black, or not black, but this more concentrated color and add it here at the stem. And darken that up a little bit there. And then we're gonna come in. And 
I'm gonna come in and just add some more shading to this one. All right, let's see, let's finish this one. And this one right here, we're gonna do like a light, take some of this yellow color up here and add just a little bit of brown. Water it down. Too much paint, so we're gonna some up with your brush and add some more dark color here and this one I don't like how dark it is there in the center so we're gonna take some of that out and add some more black dark All right, we're gonna go up here to this red one and see if we can add some white. Now this here is um, white gouache and it works the same as watercolor, but it's just a little bit more concentrated. But I find even with the gouache, like it still is not like a pure, pure white. And I, I typically go in with several coats because as it dries, um, it, it just becomes lighter and you'll be able to see here. And it is the same with white watercolor. White watercolor um, is never like highly concentrated and it just becomes lighter. Here it's still wet as you can tell and so it'll bleed a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take the white and just add some more shading on some of these where we picked up the watercolor and it's not quite as light. This little guy needs some help. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with him, but add some white there and maybe some black specks. I don't know, he just doesn't look how I envisioned him to look, but it's okay. Um, these here, I'm gonna let them go. I like how those turned out. So let's see, this one, still drying, but I think that looks great. All right guys, thanks for following along. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and I'll be adding more woodland um, videos in the weeks to come so if you guys could um, hit the subscribe button and the like button that would be fantastic and would help out my channel a lot and I am planning to see you guys next week